how old are you, Alex? And I go, I'm 64. And they go, what? <laughs> Come on. I said, people were coming into me in, in the leisure centre. Is that you, Alex? I'm going, yeah. And they go, what have you done? And I went, oh, what do you mean? They go, you're like half the man. <laughs> and I'm going, really? And, you know, for, for the first time in like 20, 30, 40 years, I was getting compliments. I want to get on the rooftops with a megaphone. The thing for me was health benefits. All my issues, which I was struggling with from week to week, you know, which typical bloke, I kept it to myself. They were disappearing. Welcome to Homestead How. I'm Kerry, and I have a special guest with me today. We have Alex all the way from Liverpool, UK. Is that right, Alex? Yeah, as you say, I'm Alex. I'm from Liverpool in the UK, so it's nice to, you know, greet you across the pond. Um, I'm 64, going to be 65 next month on 25th of August. Uh, you said you couldn't believe it. Neither can I. <laughs> I, I, I got I don't want to interrupt you, but I got to show you this once because I don't oh. believe it. I want you to send me like a picture of your passport or something. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I, I believe you, but you you look amazing. So this is Thank you when, very much. hopefully this will show up okay. When I think 65, that's my grandfather <laughs> and grandmother. I oh, think wow. he was 66 or 67 there. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, I'm not shaming my grandpa, but that. The most six. I, I also before this call, I looked up uh, stock photos of sixty-five year olds, and they look more like him than like you. So. Yeah. Well, again, again, you know, the same for me. When my grandfather died, uh, he was sixty-four. I was living in London, and I came up from London to say, you know, my last respects. And I think back now, he looked about eighty-five compared to you know, to, this was in the seventies. And uh, he was a heavy smoker, uh, like the pints of Guinness, you know. He was a docker, you know, an old-fashioned docker, stevedore, and lived a, you know, really hard-working class life. And I think that does reflect on how people look, you know. But, right. uh, yeah, I don't feel it. Uh, since I've been on Carnivore, I feel decades younger. When I saw your Thursday day vid, I thought... For 30 days, I ate only meat. This guy is my much, much younger brother from another mother. <laughs> I could, I could just relate to all the things you were saying about your health issues and mental uh, challenges. And I thought, oh, this guy's going to be one of my subs. And uh, I mean, obviously, I'd subbed with John um, Homestead Howe, but I was watch I've watched all your videos time and time again. I still can't get past how young you look at 65. Congratulations. Like you said, I wish I'd known about this 20 years ago. I'm just wondering what my life would be now. You know, uh, I'm grateful to Michelle, my wife. She's... Um, Keita Vore, you know, Alex and Sophie, my grown-up children, uh, Sophie started Carnivore on the 1st, I think it's 1st of July. And Alex, um, you know, he's 22, so he goes in and out of, um, you know, keto. He does like his steaks. Um, <laughs> but again, all his uh, skin issues, all his acne is all cleared up, you know, and I think he knows that this is the way to go. But at that age, you know, they, they're a bit more sort of like they, they get deflected. Yes. Yeah. Wow. We're so similar because my daughter, Lily, who had the great success on carnivore, she went for 30 days. Her skin issues cleared up. I've talked about that before. But then yeah. on, 30, on day 30, she was like, I'm going to go off of this and just try eating keto for a little while, some, brings back some salads and things like that. And she had all sorts of issues. And she's come back to carnivore. And I think she slipped up a couple of times, too. It's really hard at that age. But to your point, I'm I'm very happy because now she has this sort of inner toolbox. So, you know, if it's 10 years from now and she's really struggling or anything, she knows that this is the way to do it and that it works. Absolutely. 100%. You tell me a little bit more. So like, how long have you been doing carnivore and how did you, how did you find it? Yeah. Well, I started out April, 2022. Um, I'm a mad YouTube fan. I don't watch mainstream news or TV. I haven't done it for about 10 years. Uh, just on the internet, like a lot of people nowadays. And, you know, YouTube algorithms, the way they are. I, I, I used to follow a lot of like uh, chef channels because I'm, I'm the chef in the house, or I was <laughs> before, <laughs> before Carnivore. But um, Fat Fiction, the documentary movie, turned up. And I was obviously because it was a food documentary. I opened it up, watched it, I think it's about an hour and a half. And I sat there with my jaw dropped and I thought, I've been doing everything wrong for 60 odd years. <laughs> And I thought it was like a eureka moment, uh, you know, an epiphany. And I was like, right, Michelle, let's get all the stuff out the store cupboards. Let's get all our food out. And I was on it. And it was about 90% of all our food, whether it was in the freezer, the fridge, uh, or the dry store cupboard, it was all sugar. 
And I was like, oh, what? Right. And, you know, we'd always been like working on a Mediterranean diet. The kids couldn't have cornflakes with sugar on because I knew there was sugar in them. But I'd never really taken it that serious. Um, my diet was carb heavy, uh, low fat. I was doing all the things that, you know, you're supposed to do or you're told to do. And then once I got that movie in my head, uh, it obviously linked me to uh, Dr. Sean Baker. And so I said to Michelle, right, I'm going to do this on the 1st of May. I don't know how it's going to go, but like anything, if you do it for a couple of weeks, you know, it can become a habit. And um, so <laughs> I got all the stuff at the store covered, put it into another box, kept it out of the way, didn't throw anything away except obviously perishables. And so 1st of May last year started and um, found it great because I've always loved steaks, I love eggs, um, but obviously I love pasta, rice, bread, all the other stuff, and I wasn't eating it. Two weeks into it, I'd lost nine pounds in weight, and Michelle, is a, she's a strong, she's a tough nurse. She won't give you a compliment because I always fall back. And she went, my God, hon, you've, you, your waist is going in. I was like, yeah, no, <laughs> what's going on? You know, I've been trying in the gym for years. I get free gym membership through my uh, swim teaching. None of it worked, and I hated doing it anyway. But I just stood there and I went, I'm actually going in at the waist. So kept it up. She was obviously supportive. Went into the next month. I must have lost about 11 pounds. Wow. And I was starting to pull my trousers up and shirts were hanging off me. And the following month, uh, went into work. And we had new T-shirts, you know, like new swim tops. And uh, the boss gave me two size 2XLs. And I went, oh, I'm sorry, guys, they won't fit me now. <laughs> and they gave me a large, so it's gone down two sizes. And then a couple of months later, I went on to a medium, and I've never worn a medium UK size top since my 20s. So you can imagine my brain was like, oh, my God, what's going on? So I said the first three months, weight loss was great, but then the most, I think as you would agree, the, the thing for me was health benefits. All my issues, which I was struggling with from week to week, you know, which typical bloke, I kept it to myself, they were disappearing. And um, I say since my 50s, I have had a lot of major, like, operation stuff. I can go into that in a minute. But I just had, as I say, this, like, I was almost euphoric. I was like, this is the thing for me. So I started digging down into the videos more, found Dr. Ken Berry. I was so grateful for that. Anthony Chafee, uh, Dr. Robert Kiltz. And, you know, all of a sudden I was like YouTube 24 hours a day, just absorbing this information. And I just found this vehicle and I thought, this, this is going to work because it's not me talking to like someone like yourself, obviously who's like a crazy fan, but somebody like a neurosurgeon like uh, Dr. Anthony Chafee, I'm, I'm sitting up taking notice thinking, you know, this is, this is something I've really got to take seriously. But right. I said, the first three months... <laughs> Uh, people were coming into me in, in the leisure centre by poolside going, is that you, Alex? <laughs> I'm going, yeah. And they go, what have you done? And I went, oh, what do you mean? They went, You're like half the man. <laughs> and I'm going, really? I, you know, for, for the first time in like 20, 30, 40 years, I was getting compliments from friends, family, work colleagues. And I was going, this is just crazy. And, you know, as you've said, if you'd have said to me 13 months ago, 14 months ago, I'd be doing this and I'd be on YouTube having, you know, a great uh, video with yourself, I'd have gone, you are crazy. You have <laughs> lost your marbles, you know. But as I say, here I am today and uh, thriving like yourself. I want to get on the rooftops with a megaphone, shout out to people. But you can't do that, can you? Because you just suffocate them. And, you know, their cognitive dis dissonance comes in and you think, well, they can see what I'm doing. They can see the dramatic changes, but for them to go through that door, they've got to really walk through it. Yeah, I agree. That's one big struggle, especially when you see loved ones, friends, and family that Absolutely. are suffering. You're like, here's the key right here. It's very simple. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm the same way. Just put the example out there and hopefully they'll they'll decide to follow. And actually, it took... I. I mentioned this last night. Um, I don't think you've seen this one yet, but this was one of the craziest things that happened to me was I'm on day 113 today. On day 112, my wife finally decided mm. on her own she's going to be a carnivore now. Which I was, did see it. I saw it earlier on. 
completely mind blowing uh, to me because just for fantastic. everyone out there that's not familiar with her, she was a vegetarian for five years. She has this horrible meat aversion. She hates meat so much. And she started with chicken and turkey a while ago, and then she was going to do keto and salads and stuff. And yesterday she woke up and she said, I'm going to be the captain of my own ship. I was like, oh, great. I, I thought she just meant like, I'm going to do keto again with the salads and everything, which I'm, I'm not knocking keto because it's helped a lot of people. But for me, carnivore was 10 times better than, than yeah. keto. I think keto is a good way to get into it. But, so she's on day two today. I'm going to be smoking up some big thick steaks <laughs> out there for her. So we'll see. But yeah, a couple of things you said were really interesting. One of the things was the clothes. That's a good tip for everyone out there. If you start carnivore, on my day 30, I went out and bought a bunch of new uh, shorts. We were just hitting summertime here. And they don't fit me anymore now. <laughs> yeah. I'm, on, I'm on day 112. So I, I, I'm like, I, I did a little too early. You got to get like the elast elastic bands or something because you just keep, yeah. you keep losing. Do oh. what you did with the, uh, the, you know, the belt where you put the extra holes in, you know. So right. all, all my shorts are brought down from the loft for the summer. And I actually stood up, put a pair on. They fell down. Michelle was like, oh, God. I'd lost six inches off my waist. I went from 38 to 32. I haven't been uh, a 32-inch waist since my, third, well, 20s. And, you know, I, again, I'm thinking, how the how is this possible? You know, all that subcutaneous fat just melted away, like you say on the videos. And I'm thinking, you know, now that it's happening to me, I actually believe it. That's one of those things, too. There, there's so many benefits to carnivore. Yeah. And people, it's, it's hard to convey all of them. But, yeah, to, to your other point earlier, the weight loss has been amazing and great, but everything else that you don't think about, just the, the mental health for me, the anxiety, depression, I don't have any of that anymore. Mm -hmm. And then the brain fog. And but did you have this, Alex? So I'm having things. I really wish I kept a log, uh, a journal of sorts. I'm, I'm having things that I'm noticing that I didn't even think were issues before. Because it became my new normal. Like brain fog was kind of a good one. I just thought that was my normal state. Like I'm I'm always struggling and slurring and trying to figure out what word I'm trying to say before carnivore. Now I'm thinking a lot clearer afterwards. There's lots of little things. Like my elbow, I was like, oh, that this is what a normal elbow feels like. I don't know that because for 10 years I was walking around and I'd always had pain in my elbow. It became normal to me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I struggled. I mean, I had my right knee replaced when I was 50 because I had osteoarthritis uh, from all the sports I've done over the years. And that's when the problem started, really, because I was unable to do sports for so many years and then um, started getting a little bit of pain in my left hip, couldn't sleep on it. But last 13 months, I get no issues with the knee replacement and all the pain I had in me on my left hand side, which I normally sleep on anyway. That's all gone too. I mean, again, I, I put it down to obviously the carnivore diet, but also the stuff I've eliminated, you know, right. over the last 12 months. I've been looking obviously at oxalates, um, lectins, all the, all the toxins that are in food. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, veggie or not. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, as I say, these, it's almost like revelations for me that I've got all these uh, health benefits and I've, I've lost all the issues that I had over the years since I was 50. That's one thing I, I think is, a, is important for people. So many people that are considering carnivore, when you say, hey, carnivore, you're just going to eat meat forever. So many people get discouraged. But one thing that I did and kind of Jen's doing now too, and that I'm encouraging people is don't necessarily think about it. Hey, I'm going to eat meat for 30 days. No, you're going to eliminate all that other garbage Alex just yeah. mentioned. Sugar being a big one, seed oils, and then, yeah, all the toxins and everything. Uh, uh, it sounds a lot more easy to swallow, so to speak, when you think of it that way. I'm just eliminating all this garbage. I think almost everyone universally can agree that that couldn't be – there's nothing really wrong with an elimination diet. No, uh, no. I, I've said it on my channel before, but Alex and I are both living with almost no inflammation. It's amazing, and it's hard to describe, but everyone out there deserves to live at least a day. One day, try to live one day with no inflammation because, man, that stuff messes you up so bad. I, I was a big snorer before. I've mentioned this before. I stopped snoring pretty quick. Was that you too? Absolutely. I used to get the bruises in the in the ribs, you know, every night for Michelle. And I'd be like, did I snore again? She goes, yeah, you did. 
And I was like, oh, I wonder what that pain was. <laughs> and again, my doctor told me years ago, it's the inflammation, it's the, you know, the soft palate, and now you get that vibration. And I would sit, no, no matter which side I re- slept on, it would always come up. Um, he never ever gave me any solutions to it, but and then you always go online and it's like, try this, you know. I mean, mine wasn't as bad as yours, but um, again, almost from day one, last, last May, no snoring. I've heard that from so many people. People think I'm lying when I say that because it happened for me on day one too. And so, like I said, my wife Jen started yesterday and she's been snoring a lot as well. And last night she snored, but it was about half. Like I, I, I mean, I could have written it down. Like, so I, I think wow. it's going to go away for her too. And it's, uh, it's really interesting. I think snoring is probably a good kind of scale or indicator for inflammation. I didn't know that initially. I've always had a really fat neck, especially when I was overweight. It was a lot fatter. And the doctor, the, the doctor I went to first for sleep apnea, I went to a sleep study. He's like, you got to lose weight. A lot of the fat in your neck is causing it. He didn't mention inflammation, but Dr. Chafee did uh, too. He's like, yeah, that's just inflammation. And yeah. <clears throat> imagine how bad the inflammation is when it's causing you to literally stop breathing throughout the night. I've told people this, and it's still true to to this day. If I was still a hundred pounds heavier than I was now, I would still do carnivore just for the sleep benefits because yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm exactly the same. I, I was trying to describe my, I mean, even the first month of my sleep, I would wake up and go, God, I'm getting up two hours earlier. What's going on? And normally I'd roll over, especially at the weekend. Say, yeah, come on, let's grab some more sleep. I said to Michelle, I feel as if I could go out now and just go for a run. And she's like, are you sure you're my husband? You're not a clone? <laughs> I said, Michelle, I'm sure you're a movie buff. You've seen Inception many times. Oh, yes. Well, I, said, I was trying to describe to Alex Jr. how I said my sleep is, I said I'm getting a lift down to the basement of sleep. And I'm staying there for hours and hours. I'm having amazing dreams. They're not negative. They're all they're like almost like stories. And then I feel as if I'm coming up. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, um, I keep the curtains open in the morning. The daylight comes. And I go, I feel 100%. And I always, almost feel as if I'm a, a dream within a dream sometimes. It's that, it's that deep and that wow. relaxing. And again, another fantastic uh, benefit. Right. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. How how are you doing? So I know you said you do the swim school, so you're probably getting a lot of exercise. How is that different now on carnivore versus before? Well, maybe I should have got one of my colleagues to come and sit with me because they would tell you it's black and white. I mean, more so. I mean, if I did, I always do Saturday mornings, uh, eight till like twelve, and before carnivore, I'd come home at twelve o'clock and say to Michelle, it was ninety degrees on poolside and done, and I'd go to go to bed in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's like Alex can you do an extra hour can you get the, you know I put all the equipment away and I'm like my god it's 12 o'clock already and then I go home uh, have, have some you know steak or whatever and then like what should we do now show for war it's it's completely transformed things uh, I used to get so hot on poolside sweaty um, not at all now it's like it's 85 degrees normally 84 85 degrees and i say at my age i used to go oh it's my age it's all the young lifeguards they're okay but i'm I'm really struggling but i walk on poolside now and they go oh here he is 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 the psycho (laughs) (laughs) it's the crazy older teacher i've been doing some training recently and uh, all the young teachers are like 19 20 the lifeguards and they want to do some swim teaching and what they have to do is shadow me and they go oh this guy looks a bit bit ancient i suppose so I, I kick off and start doing all my you know i've been doing it 15 years so it's like you know walks off a duck's back for you pardon the pun and they're looking at me going what's this guy on you know and then uh, sometimes i drop my age into this thing saying like you know i'm, I'm quite experienced i'm, I'm a retired uh, local government guy and they go how old are you alex and i go i'm 64 and they go what <laughs> come on i said i'd have put you 45 and they go i like you i like you a lot <laughs> and it's, you know it's just Something, as I say, I've never had that type of experience all through my working life. People going, oh, you're looking really good. Definitely black and white from the the, uh, swim teaching. What about your mental ability? Because I I keep, this sounds like it's the case for you where I keep saying, I feel like on Carnivore now, I'm getting the work done of three of my former selves. Yeah. And I think it's the energy and... um, I don't get tired as easily as I did before, just to your point. But then it's also, for me, it seems like it's 
it seems like it's the brain too. Like I'm making better, wiser decisions. I'm using my time better, scheduling things better. Have you noticed anything on the on the brain side as well? Oh, absolutely, no brain fog at all. Um, I'd have conversations with Michelle, and it'd be like I couldn't finish the sentence. I couldn't think of the words. You know, um, I think I struggled a little bit after the UK lockdowns because all my work was taken away from me, and mm. I'd been working like forty five years. Um, I was passionate about my swim teaching. I'd gone from a really stressful uh, local government job. I'd been in that career 33 years. I got early retirements in uh, 2008, straight into swim teaching, and that was just fantastic for me. Working with kids, you know, it, it helped keeps you grounded. 20, 20, 2020, wasn't it? All the work I've taken away from us, uh, me and Michelle were sitting in the garden, just sitting there twiddling our thumbs. And I, on reflection, I went really low. I went back into my cave. I wasn't happy. I was quiet, grumpy. And on reflection now, I think I probably was more depressed than I realized. Uh, but I think the worst thing was I didn't know what to do. And I didn't have the outlet. And I realized I wasn't in control of my life as much as I thought I was. Uh, obviously, we need income. Um, you know, we're, we're okay. But for me not to be able to go out and do what I want to do, I don't know whether it affects men more than women, but I really went low. And, and Michelle talks about it now. She says, you know, it wasn't, you weren't the guy we know. And, uh, you know, thank God it's all over and we're back to some, some, some kind of normal. She sees the difference in me over the last 12, 13 months. Planning everything, you know, is so much better. Uh, we go out more. <laughs> we, we were in uh, Wales, uh, North Wales uh, in October, and I'm walking up Snowdon, you know, one of our mountains, and she's like, this guy is not my husband. What's going on? It's just clear. As you said, when you're in the fog, you can't see it. Um, it's like, I just, I just couldn't. It's like when you're in the fight, you don't need it in the fight. I just couldn't believe how low I went. And then all of a sudden, it just burst out with this carnivore journey and, um, you know, back on track. So, yeah, I can relate to what you said about, I mean, one thing you said to me about, so you said on video where you said, uh, I went into a room with no windows. I think you was telling Dr. Chafee. And I, you know, I got quite emotional listening to what you were saying. I could relate to it. And I was thinking that guy sat there for hours in a darkened room. And I thought that's how you, that's how your mind can be sometimes as well. Yeah. Wow. What a transformation. I am so happy for you. And, oh, sorry. I'm just thinking about what you just said there. Yeah. Going back to kind of the basics, because so many people watching this, they're going to get inspired and they're going to think I want to start. When you say carnivore diet, a lot of people have different definitions for that. What are you eating regularly? Uh, my go-to meal is a <laughs> Kerry's Power Bowl. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, I, 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 I like ground beef anyway, but I use the 20% fat. Watching you put 28 scrambled eggs in your Power Bowl, I was like, whoa, that's amazing. But yeah, I've always had, uh, maybe from me, I, I pound the ground beef, and um, like six rashes of bacon chopped up, fried. Uh, and then I used to make four little holes in the in the ground beef, put an egg in each one, turn the heat off, put the lid on, plenty of red and salt, let it cool down a bit, and then have that. And that would just fill me for 24 hours. Um, I like to say I like steaks. I found a great butcher um, around the corner from us. And uh, in fact, I just ordered a uh, four kilo um, half sirloin for tomorrow. I should get about 20 steaks out of that. So, so I go more for sirloin than uh, ribeyes, just purely from cost uh i'm a big egg fan and um, but yeah basically b b b and e uh, like a lot of us do no cheese no uh, heavy cream and so i i took that on board lost another six pounds and at the end of june i got down to 12 stone dead and now i've just gone down to 11 stone 12 so i'm two pounds off my uh uk bmi figure which means that i'll be a normal weight so at the moment, I'm 166, yeah, I'm 166 pounds. Uh, I've lost what, about 38 altogether, you know. So I'm w working towards three stone. And it's only because I cut out the uh, double cream and the cheese, because I think they were more, is it calorific or caloric? But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I make basically beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. The best, the best stuff, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I tend to do OMAD, you know, one meal a day, maybe every other day. Um, but I've almost started doing 24-hour uh, fasting, which, again, I never thought I'd ever do in my lifetime, ever. Your story is so similar to mine. That's what I was doing 
Um, so I've been doing lion diet for 25 days, yeah. not for any particular health reason, uh, just because I wanted to try to. But before that, I was doing the same thing as you, beef, butter, bacon, eggs. I do the power bowl and I would usually do two meals one day and then one the mm -hmm. next. I always tell people, a lot of people watching this, they always ask. That's one of the comments we get all the time. They're like, tell me what you're eating, when you're eating exactly. And it's like, everybody's different. Like, Alex is different now than Alex might be when you get down to your goal weight. Maybe you'll start have to eat a little bit more just to maintain mm -hmm. then. The OMAD thing. So the reason I did Lion Diet, I was on day 90. And I was like, I could go 10 days on Lion Diet. I was talking to Dante from Frigno Freedom. And he just hit 900 days doing Lion Diet. So I was like, come on, man, you could do 10 days on lion diet, right? I started doing it and I'm not pushing or encouraging anyone, but if you ever do stall out Alex or anyone watching this and you want to give it a try, I started doing that uh, lion diet and I was, I was doing great on carnivore, but I was just noticed I was stalling a little bit out. And as soon as yeah. I started lion diet, just psh, weight started coming off real quick again too. So I have kind of this arbitrary goal in mind too, which is kind of close to yours. I'm trying to get down to 162. If I hit 162, I'll be down 100 pounds from my heaviest. I didn't lose 100 on carnivore. I've, it's been about 50. I lost a, about another 40 or so uh, doing keto on and off before yeah. starting carnivore for years, yo-yoing. And you mentioned Michelle and how impressed she's been with your changes. So you talked a little bit about it, but other family members, friends, people that you work with? Uh, yeah, uh, Sophie, my daughter, she's 31. She's looking to start a family, and um, she's obviously seen the changes in me. Um, she's happily married to uh, Andy. He's uh, really into um, weightlifting. He's uh, he's just done a competition in Newcastle in the UK, and uh, did really well in that. I think the pair of them have looked at me and thought, "Wow, what's he doing?" And so she said, "Dad, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it." And I said, "Well, at the end of the day, so you've got to have a why." Why am I doing this? If you haven't got that in front of you all the time, you'll never do it. You'll fall off the wagon. You know, you'll go to a birthday party. You'll go to a, a barbecue, you know, or whatever. And you'll just you'll just go back to the way you were because once that sugar gets into your dopamine receptors, you're gone. At my age in particular, I mean, she's obviously 31. I have to be really determined on this. Uh, otherwise, it won't work. I'll go back to eating ice cream, peanuts, crisps, or, you know, uh, chips as you guys call them and you know i could have sat there with a, a bag of peanuts a bottle of wine in the week anytime and then i would wonder why i was i couldn't you know make any improvements yeah so get back to what you're saying alex is um he's 22 he's, he knows what, what works and what doesn't but you know he's, he's 22 he's, he's going to watch his dad get fitter and fitter which i know he's proud of uh, michelle i think she's an intentional kind of uh, keto she does She's not a lover of steak, but, you know, all our lives, we've always tried to eat like a Mediterranean diet, and she looks fantastic. We've been to the gym today. Uh, she looks really well. She's nearly 58. I, I think she'd pass for, what, 35. Uh, she yeah. does makeup. Uh, she works in retail. She looks amazing, and it's all down to her. Uh, so, yeah, so the family itself, we're on, we're on board. Um, I used to be the chef, but not anymore. <laughs> That's been the strangest thing uh, coming in. Do you want, you know, uh, if I come in early, do you want breakfast? No, I'm not hungry. Uh, do you want lunch? No, it's not two o'clock yet. And so I think that's one of the bigger challenges. Uh, last year we went out for Father's Day, just Sophie, Alex Jr. and myself. Went into Liverpool and they took me to a fancy restaurant. And the pair of them were on edge thinking, what's dad going to eat? <laughs> so, so we sat down, I got this big menu and the pair of them were so quiet. And I looked up and they're going, is there anything on it you can have, dad? And I went, yeah, I'll have a full lamb of show uh, little lamb, and I'll have the cartuchery, you know, with the uh, the ham, the cheese, the big, you know, Spanish board. And they were like, "Ah, oh, thank God for that!" And I was like, "Guys, listen, I'm not going to become a morbidly obsessed with, you know, with this type of thing. If I want to eat mushrooms or broccoli, which I won't, but if I wanted to, I would make that decision, and then see how it goes." So all those negatives went away and they were like, Oh God, that's going to eat normally, you know? So we, we have settled into a routine where we just eliminate as many carbs as possible. All junk foods gone and uh, no processed carbs, no boxes, no bags of food, you know, nothing comes in a box, anything with more than two ingredients. I just won't touch anyway. Uh, just a, just a quick one on uh, colleagues. One of Michelle's best friends, um, I won't tell your name, because she said to me, I could speak about it. 
about six months ago, I walked into our extension and she's with Shell having a coffee and her jaw dropped and I went, oh, hi, how are, you? how are you? And she goes, Alex, I thought you were Alex Jr. for a minute. And I went, <laughs> come on. She goes, what, what, what have you done? And you know, when someone's shaking their head, they went, I've gone on a thing called the carnivore diet. And she went, tell me more. Oh my God. So she's embraced it. Uh, she's in uh, cancer remission uh, from about three or four years ago, but she put loads of weight on about two, two and a half stone. And I sent her a WhatsApp yesterday and said, hey, how's it going? And then she said her name then. And she said, great. So listen, I'm hoping to go on YouTube tomorrow to uh, speak to hopefully a new friend of mine. And uh, we're going to talk about carnival. And she goes, oh, I've, I've been off the wagon for a bit. And she said, I put eight pounds on. She said, but I've still lost two stone, 12 pounds. And I was like, yeah, you know. And so she said, it's, she knows that there's a, you know, a distinct relationship between nutri nutrition and cancer, glucose, et cetera. And she's got a, a sparkle back, but so she's lost two two stone. Was it twelve pounds? And her husband's like, "Yeah, this is great." So that's one success. And the second one is one of our swimmers. Uh, he's in his forties. He's a paramedic, and uh, I've seen him in the pool for years. And he walked in about three months ago. He's swimming along in the you know in the adult lanes, and I'm teaching. And he goes, "Alex, Alex, what have you done?" And I went. Oh, and he goes, what, what have you done? He said, you look amazing. And because obviously I've got me a smaller kit on as well. And he's like, I tell me, I said, well, I've changed my diet. So I've changed my nutrition. He goes, you need to tell me. So he, he gets dry, he gets his phone out. And he goes, come on, give me some information. I said, what's well, called a carnivore diet. And I said, you, you know, I don't eat any plants, vegetables, carbohydrates. I just eat, my two macros are mainly the ratio of probably two to one fats. And protein, he goes, great, great. Anybody has to go on YouTube, check Dr. Auntie Chafee, Dr. Ken Berry, Sean Baker, took it all down, excellent. A month later, he comes back up to me, he goes, ah, oh, uh, I had to pack it in, Alice, I'm getting too much pressure from the family. I said, you look, you look as if you've lost a bit of weight. Two weeks ago, and obviously a week ago, he's uh, in the pool again, Al, come over here. So I said, yeah, I've just finished my lessons. And he's like, I've started Carnival on the 1st of July. And I'm like, Oh, amazing. I said, that's great. She said, I've lost nine pounds. And he's a big lad. He's six foot four, a very competitive swimmer. You know, you, you, you could see him in the Olympics. He's that good. And I was like, that, that's amazing. So I sat down on poolside. I went, can I ask you why you came back to me? So this is the kicker. Uh, I've just been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Oh. So me going, I went, oh, what have I said? And, I said, and he goes, no, Al. He said, listen, it, it's the best thing you've given me. You've given me a vehicle. Uh, I've looked into, I've dug deep down into the research about the cancer, nutrition, and what we've been doing all these, you know, over the last 50 years. And he goes, I'm more excited than ever. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. And he goes, no, no. He said, can we get on WhatsApp together and we can do some swapping like recipes and stuff like that? He said, because, you know, I, I want to do what you're doing. And I said, well, you know, that's great. I said, but, you know, I, I feel terrible now. I've been a bit too nosy. And he goes, no, Alex, he said, I've got no other alternative. I've got no corridor, no avenue. He said, what you've done is you've opened the door for me by, by being a perfect example of what you can do if you change your nutrition journey. So I walked away thinking, oh, my God, I feel terrible. But we've been on a WhatsApp group now, and we're chatting away, and he keeps sending me pictures of his food, and he's eating in this paramedic uniform. I'm thinking, this is just crazy what, you know, the, 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 the sorts of, like, the things that can happen from you just changing yourself and how much other people can change as well by just taking on board what you've done. So, yes, yeah, so that's the answer to the question. I've, you know, I've got family on board, a uh, couple of friends, and, as I say, some work colleagues as well. That's amazing. You, made me, you, made, me, you. <laughs> you made me tear up a little bit there. That's crazy. Wow. Isn't it, isn't it like there's no bigger, better calling than to be able to do what you did for him? Yes. And that's why – like I'm not patting myself on the back. I unintentionally came into this. I was just going to do my 30 day carnivore video because, as you know, I'm I'm a homesteader. I mostly do homesteading videos yeah, for eight yeah. years. But I did that video and I started hearing similar stories, not as powerful as yours, but similar stories. Like, hey, I saw your 30 day update three weeks ago. I started, and all of these things are happening. Like you were telling the truth. Like this is real. And then now that it's been, well, gee, over 80 days since that uh, 30 day update. 
Uh, I've just been getting more and more. And it's funny because on Carnivore, you can probably relate to this too. It's like, I'm the captain of my own ship. I have no addictions anymore. Yeah. Sugar's gone. Caffeine's gone. There's nothing anymore. I never smoked or drank. But now I'm like, oh, wait, I do have one addiction. I'm addicted to carnivore now and talking about it and telling everyone about it. Uh, it's amazing, though. So you just set your example. You weren't out there preaching like, hey, you should do this or you should eat this way. He, he actually came to you. And because of yeah. your example and your amazing transformation. It, it's so powerful, isn't it? It's, it's so powerful. Yeah. This yeah. us talking right now and you doing this, Alex, I'm going to be sending you the comments. We're going to get on this it, from you, your story, inspiring people, because yeah. it's just amazing. And it's like you said, I wish I knew about this 20 years ago. I was in the deepest, darkest depression and all the other issues. Uh, that's the reason I'm doing that. The, the carnivore diet documentary too, I guess. Yeah. Uh, just to mention that real quick. Carrie here with a quick update on the carnivore diet documentary, and then we'll jump right back into the video. I am putting together a carnivore diet documentary following real people over the course of a year, people that are suffering from obesity, diabetes, um, depression, mental health, aging issues. And we want to see how they do on the carnivore diet for one year. And we want to have some expert doctors along with them for the ride. We want to share those examples with the world. I think it's one of the most important things we can do. And so we're making good progress on this, but we're still trying to raise funding so that we can film it and we can do a proper job. And the goal is to get this documentary on one of the big streaming services. So if you're interested in participating in the documentary or donating to it, or just purchasing a shirt, all the funds from this go towards the documentary. And by the way, I'm not making a penny on this. I'm putting my own money and time into it. Just visit www.carnivoredietmovie.com. You know, like you said earlier, it is kind of hard to uh, argue with Dr. Anthony Chafee, a neurosurgeon, or Dr. Barry, or Dr. Philip Ovadia, who's performed yeah. thousands of heart surgeries. Absolutely. So you got you to gotta pay attention to those guys a little bit closer. We're going to have all of that in the documentary. Um, but the ultimate goal is to reach more people so that people like Alex and myself 20 years ago, 10 years ago, a couple of years ago that were hopeless. So they realize they don't have to be hopeless. There is an answer. There is a, there is a way out. Yeah. The, the aging section, I am so excited for because Alex, I interviewed, um, maybe you've seen this one, uh, carnivore Ron he was doing carnivore for five years, looks great for his age. And he was just doing circles around all of his peers, uh, that were his age. And I've gotten so many comments since that video, so many comments. The most popular comments I've gotten are from people 65, 70s, 80s that are just thriving on carnivore diet. And many of them have been doing it for years and years. It's just mind-blowing to me. It's awesome. It's like the best comment to get too because uh, I had this, this gentleman who was 82 years old call me up. He sounded like he was in his 40s when he called too, by the way. I'm talking to him. He's like, oh, I'm 82. I've been doing carnivore for several years now, and he's just thriving. And that's the point I want to get across because I think aging, obesity, a lot of people can relate to. Not yeah. everybody can relate to type 2 diabetes, but a lot of people have it. Uh, but aging is another one. Everyone can relate to aging and being scared of getting older and having mobility issues and problems with pain and not getting around quickly. And I mean, you're the, the, the perfect example of it. I mean, do you have other folks that are uh in their 60s like you that that you see that are not thriving <laughs> like you or that are slowing down or they're having these issues yeah you you see it basically at the, at the sports center i mean obviously we use the gym uh, the guys up there all shapes and sizes but they're, they're being positive it's it's just a frustration that they probably just don't know what the answer is you know they they think they know the answer uh, on poolside, a couple of times we we have aqua swim, you know, where, should we say, adults who are struggling with the weight are in the water, you know, doing exercises. And, and I'm standing there thinking, you need to get in the kitchen first, sort out the nutrition, and then you can go to uh, do your exercise. It's the wrong way around, you know. But you can see that the, the frustration in, in their eyes, that they want, you know, want an answer. I probably got the answer, but I can't give it to them. It's just not the right time. But yeah, it's where I live in the northwest of England. I think we do have a, a serious epidemic of obesity. Um, just it's it's not people's fault to a degree. It's just they're trying to do the right thing. But like probably like yourself and I did all those years ago, it was it was we need to flip it. It's the wrong way around. You know, cholesterol. 
um, all those other issues, you know, I've absorbed all that and tried to do the right thing. I used to trim all the fat off, you know, make sure that the low spread, you know, margarines instead of butter. And as I said, last 13 months, I've flipped around everything and it's just been amazing. Right. Uh, after this, I've got a carnivore who's just come in the room. It's uh, Alex's Bengal cat. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got one of those too. Wow, your sounds just like mine too. Mine yeah. is constantly crying to be let in, let out, go in the other room, yeah. pet it, whatever. Yeah. Um, but uh, she's just come in the room. She scratched me leg, saying, "You know, feed me, feed me." <laughs> yeah, You're she... absolutely right, though. That, that's the one thing that's it's frustrating with it because it's no, it's not their fault. It wasn't your fault. It wasn't my fault. When you're told your whole life, this is what you do, reduce the fat, eat the low fat stuff. Like you said, cut the fat off. The fat's going to clog your arteries and kill you. Yeah. And then, uh, well, the other opposite end of the spectrum too is just the sugar and getting hooked mm -hmm. on it from a long, uh, from a young age. I, I don't know, here in the US, Saturday mornings, like I mentioned earlier, as a kid, you'd wake up and it was just cereal commercials yeah. and uh, getting them hooked. At the same here, same here. I remember 20 years ago or so, you'd go to the grocery store somewhere and you'd see a couple of people that were overweight, but now you go and it's it's way, way more. It's very yeah. few. It's like completely flipped. Now there's, yeah. it used to be a couple of people overweight. Now there's just a couple of people that look healthy or like they should. <laughs> it's, uh, well, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm from the 60s uh, when I was at school and uh, looking back on all the photographs, there was no, no child was overweight. Um. The teachers weren't overweight, you know. There was, if you saw somebody who was, should we say, fat compared to us, you know, you you would stare at them because it was just so rare. One of the things I'm noticing too is this is something that I just hate in life, or I hate about the human brain is how things become normal. And so, like when we go to the grocery store now, like we were just saying, you look around and everyone's overweight, but it's kind of slowly gone towards that, and now it's just kind of normal. And everyone's like, yeah, it's just normal to eat sugar. It's normal that everyone you see out in public is pretty much unhealthy and overweight. And uh, it, it makes it hard to overcome it, too, because we're looked at like the crazy ones. And we're <laughs> we're actually what normal should be. Uh, I don't know. It's just that's one of the things that drives me nuts. But I guess speaking of normal, the other thing that can become normal is this becoming normal for you or are you starting to take some of it for granted uh, or is it still like really amazing every day you wake up, you're like, I'm feeling great or is feeling great now your new normal. So it's just like, yeah, whatever. It's just kind of levels out. I have put a lot of stuff on Facebook just to see if I could jog a few people. And I, I do call it a nutrition journey. And to me, it's a journey with no end. And I, I think it's, it gets better and better every day because as you say, the brain function is to me is one of the most important things. It, it drives everything else. And I know obviously the brain's connected to the, you know, the microbiome. I've heard about, we've got a microbiome in our teeth. I was watching a dentist on YouTube last week. And to me, I, I'm really getting excited about the, the health benefits, the physical benefits, the mental benefits. And I just know I'm, I'm probably only 20% into my progress. I know I'm going to get better. Hopefully I want to share it to people, but I just think I don't take it for granted, but I, I will never go back ever to my old way of eating. I mean, we've got the standard American diet. It's the same with the UK. It, it almost mirrors that, that diet. So to me, I'm just um, moving on and on. And if I can get as many people on board as possible, like yourself, I will do so. Your, your 30 day um, video really resonated with me because I was thinking, this guy is, is like me. He's just talking the same language, same issues, same positives. And I can see it in your eyes that you wanted to get out there and tell everybody. Yeah, so to me, um, it's a never-ending journey, to be honest. And then that's when I thought, after three, once I got the weight loss and I got the, the brain fog out the way, I thought, this, I can do this forever. And um, No problem at all. I, I just haven't got that desire for all those things I used to eat anymore. So, you know, I, I'm just... So, so ecstatic about the whole thing but you're absolutely right your taste buds your preferences yeah. completely change so my wife jen starting this yesterday i was saying that to her too i was like you just wait because she's very like i said she has this aversion to meat she's never had i don't we did a video yesterday i was like when did you ever even eat steak because even when she was a kid she never really touched it so i, I could have very well i didn't want to exaggerate the video but i'm like could have been the very well the first time she ever ate a steak was yesterday Maybe when she was a kid or something, she had a bite wow. here or there. 
Um, yeah. She's had ground beef and burgers and all that stuff, of course. But uh, she ate it. And she was like, eh, it's, this is really hard. But um, but she ate the whole thing. And That's I said, just, just wait. Just you wait. Because I know it's going to happen. It's going to shift for her. It might take a little while. But you're yeah. going to be craving this. And you're going to be asking for it. Okay, so you've had so many amazing and positive results. And I, I try, people call me the carnivore hype man. I'm the Billy Mays of carnivore. I try, I'm trying to be perfectly honest and straightforward, but if you think that all of this is hype and everything, I'm going to ask Alex in a second if you had what negative issues you've had. But if you just look at, this is one interesting thing with carnivore. You can go out there and do all this research. I always encourage people, like Alex said, you need to know why you're doing this. And then if you're still hesitant, you need to be comfortable and you can, you can only do that. You can do that yourself. Just do the research. There's so much great content out there. Dr. Barry, Dr. Chafee, Dr. Ovadia. You can read through all the comments too. Like that, I always reference Dr. Barry's reversing type two diabetes video because that that is just amazing. That video has two million views, like a thousand comments, and almost every comment is Dr. Barry, you saved my life. Dr. Barry, I did carnivore diet. I reversed my A1C, and so I'm rambling now. But my point was. All of the carnivore content I've consumed over uh, the last 112 days, which has been an incredible amount of it, it's almost universally the same thing. Results like Alex is having. I, I have very few times seen something where someone's like, I tried carnivore, it was horrible, or I, I, I had this health issue, or my, I ended up getting IBS or this or that. It's almost universally positive and yeah. good results. But have you had any negative things impact you during your your carnivore journey? No, I can't say one, not one. I, I put a Facebook post out last week saying, um, uh, this is like, was it 425 days uh, on my nutrition journey? And I've had zero days illness. Everyone I know in my you know sphere of influence is ill. They all got colds, flus. I mean, we have seasonal changes. There's been lots of fallout from, um, you know, the lockdowns and everything. People have struggled with getting back to fitness. And I think because of the lockdowns, people did struggle with also immune issues. I, I've just never been ill. <laughs> and people are probably waiting for I mean, I'm never off sick. I never have to take a day off work. I've been, I'm never getting sniffles. It's just everything is positive. And, you know, like you, I, I could just talk about this forever. Same thing for me. Haven't been sick in 112 days or however long. It's crazy, isn't it? It's crazy. Not one sniffle. And the crazy thing was too, I every we've been in this property for eight years now, and every year I get seasonal allergies. The first time I go out and cut the grass out there, there's always pollen and yellow stuff and dust, and every every single year it's horrible. To the point last year I was going to wear one of those uh, N95 like respirators out there yeah. mowing the lawn. This year I did it. There was dust everywhere. It was all over me. I didn't have one sniffle. My eye wasn't. So it's was like the allergy side of it too were gone for me, which is, again, I'm, I'm hyping carnivore, but no sniffles, no sickness, no cold. Well, yeah. everyone else in my family over the last 111 days, they've had those issues. I've had none. This has been wonderful. I have one more question for you. If you still got a little bit of time. Yeah. And plenty okay. of time. Yeah. If you could go back in time and tell yourself just starting out carnivore, what advice would you give yourself knowing what you know now? Yeah. Um, do as much research as possible. You have to have a big reason, why, a massive reason why. And you have to talk about that every day. Stick it on your fridge or wherever. It's got to be major. Uh, otherwise, you just won't do it. Take it easy. Try and eliminate as much you, as you can in terms of carbs, junk food, you know, all the stuff that we, you know, we, we, we eat without thinking. And just check how you feel each week. Take it slow. Make sure your electrolytes are good. Um, I take magnesium. Um, a friend of ours gave me some Himalayan rock salts. And I was like, what do you do with this? And he said, you lick it like a goat. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, crazy. And just, as I say, you know, give it at least a month. At least a month. Don't, don't just say, oh, you know, I've lost one pound in a week. Rubbish. It's another fad diet. Well, I'd say to people, what you're eating now is the fad diet. This is, you know, this is the proper human diet as far as I'm concerned. That's great. Yeah. Wow, this has been great, Alex. You're, you're an inspiration. This was awesome. Thank you. Yeah. This is, you got me pumped up about carnivore this morning for sure. Yeah. I usually, I'm usually am anyways, but yeah. I'm, I'm so happy for you and the results you've had. It's just an amazing transformation. I can, you have that carnivore glow and the carnivore zen too. I can see that for sure. Yeah, well, carnivores don't sunburn, do we? 
No, we don't. We don't nap. We don't sunburn. I, do you use that one around the house? I, I got to chill out on that one a little bit. My me too. Me like too. That. I'm overkill all the time. And it's, uh, you know, to me, I'm, I'm obviously I'm not a YouTuber or an influencer. I'm just a, a, a viewer, a big fan of obviously yourself and all the uh, other, should we call them influencers or whatever. And, um, you know, I've never been on YouTube before. I've got a, a, a channel called Carnival for Life, but I've done no, I've just never get around to doing it. I'm not really techie minded, but I've called it Carnival for Life because that's how I feel. It, it's given me life and it, it is going to be for life. So hopefully, you know, in the future, maybe if we get together again, I can do some contributions myself. Yeah, absolutely. I'd love to follow up and do another video. This was a lot of fun. And I'd love to work with you on the carnivore diet documentary. For yeah, sure. great. Yeah. I, I think we will for sure. And I'll definitely, yeah. I'll share some comments. I'll forward them to you when they come in. Because I know All I'm right, going to get a bunch stuff. of great comments. It's Okay. It's Thanks very much, Kerry. Thank you. Have a great day. Yeah. Kerry here with a quick update on the carnivore diet documentary. And I am putting together a carnivore diet documentary following real people over the course of a year. People that are suffering from obesity, diabetes, um, depression, mental health, aging issues. And we want to see how they do on the carnivore diet for one year. And we want to have some expert doctors along with them for the ride. We want to share those examples with the world. I think it's one of the most important things we can do. And so we're making good progress on this, but we're still trying to raise funding so that we can film it and we can do a proper job. And the goal is to get this documentary on one of the big streaming services. So if you're interested in participating in the documentary or donating to it, or just purchasing a shirt, all the funds from this go towards the documentary. And by the way, I'm not making a penny on this. I'm putting my own money and time into it. Just visit www.carnivoredietmovie.com.